Morning, everybody. Well, we'll probably get a few more folks floating in, but I thought I would mention that we're going to be working as we normally do a little bit with a roll towel. And if you have two, you can make two cylinders, preferably of equal length and diameter. And for those that haven't been in class in a while, Sam, it's nice to see you able to join. Uh, this is a simple bath towel, and I roll it into what's probably about a two and a half, three inch diameter, and it can ultimately drop down my back from my head to about where the diaphragm reaches or the back ribs, the last of the back ribs. Rough measurement, rough measurement. Um, it's always good to have towels because if you can't go to your masseuse, you can sit on them, you can roll on them. You can use them now if I'm gonna do for sukhasan, lifting my crossed shins and just wedging one of the towels mid-shin, horseshoeing it on top of my ankles, and then voila, I've got a little seat for my knees if you have tight inner legs and you can't sit in a sukhasan position easily. Last night I was reading this very old Tibetan yoga text about the practice called Mahamudra, which has got some components similar to what we're doing with our breath and our attention. Anyway, a whole chapter on alignment as you sit and how important it is to lengthen the back of the neck to place the hands a certain way so that the shoulder blades are spread to the image they use like vulture wings. <laughs> Not very appealing. I don't want to be a vulture. I want to be maybe a swan. Um, but the spreading of the, the shoulders, and I think they what they mean is the protraction, the spreading of the shoulder blades as we've been doing with our breath and equal weight in the sitting bones and then the chin, not so much drawn to the chest, but a sense of lifting from the hyoid bone in the throat up to the back of the skull. We get to lengthen the back of the skull so that the spine becomes erect and yet you're just doing these things so that you can achieve a relaxed and biomechanically alert position. So you're not just checking out sleeping, etc. Having said all that, take whatever allowances you need to sit. And the option to begin on your back is also there, in which case you'll have your towel roll ready for your head. We're gonna get there in a moment, so if you can sit, please do, and even if it means sitting in a chair. And I see a few folks just jumping on board now as we start class. So take the few preliminaries needed to find your seat, and all these little cues that I gave, gave you can be actualized by alerting or opening the diaphragm. So if you now take your attention as we've been doing to the opening of the diaphragm as you inhale, the opening of the back ribs, spreading them, up come those back ribs, up come those vulture wings as the Tibetan Buddhist text told us. And we get this upright position, almost like a ballet person, right up into the heart center. And as you exhale, open your mouth, soften your tongue, and try not to lose the buoyancy provided by the expansion of the diaphragm. And then it comes in again, it creates that lower hoop, like the trampoline, and descending, finds the sit bones, 
up it comes to the back ribs, the shoulder blades spreading, and then so the diaphragm can organize all the bits and pieces very nicely once you get it. And then you don't have to sit there like a chiropractor trying to shift your shoulders back or do this and that with your body. Those things are dissective and they tend to take your mind into this analytical instead of synthetic state or synthesizing state. So we're gonna go, I wanna flow a little bit more quickly today, this Friday, into some of the things we've been working on, starting with our three rounds of pranayama, 20 breaths. Focusing on the diaphragm, a pause on the 20th, as long as you like, and then an inhale, pause, and repeat. So here we go, and you can lie down if you prefer. So closing the eyes, you're keeping a soft gaze. Becoming aware of the spreading of the diaphragm outward and downward, like a giant parachute, trampoline. Experiencing for a few breaths the in and out and the up and down. As the breath comes in, letting the back ribs spread and grow up to the shoulders. Exhale through the mouth or the back of the throat. Opening your mouth, creating that ocean sound, clears your palate. And we're going right into 20 breaths here at your own pace. Fill all the ribs, exhale, release. Inhale. Exhale, start to make a loop continuously. And continue. If you can, breathe in through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. And feel the diaphragm. Starting to lift the body naturally. Is it filling the upper body, the rib cage, with helium? And the bottom base of the trampoline, rooting down to the sit bones, picking up the deep core muscles. Five more. Continuous deep breath without strain. Think of nourishing the cells, releasing the stress. Two more, then we pause. Exhale, release the breath. Let the belly be soft and pause. Keep the buoyancy of the ribs, the lungs floating. Keep the relaxation in the palate, the tongue, the center of the brain. Should almost feel like you're lifted by a string in the crown of the head. If you've been practicing the pranayama on your own, you're welcome to pause longer. But otherwise, when you're ready, take a little inhale, tap it off. Again, find that long, tall spine, pelvic floor to crown of head, and release. And again, breathe. Invite the breath in with the bellows opening of the diaphragm. Feel the effervescence in the fascia as the connective tissue, the joint spaces get now filled with this breath and release. So let the body gently move and sway in the inflow of the breath. 
the outflow of the breath. Notice the breath as it fills and empties. And keep your mind focused on all the qualities and res residual effects of the breath. Let it be pleasing. Let it be an invitation to become more alive through the breath. Five more. One more. Exhale, release. Soften the tongue, jaw, belly. Float. Maybe swallow. You can stay longer. Or inhale. And just cap it off softly. The heart now is, feel it's like illuminated, expansive. Focus on the heart center, the line from the pelvic floor to the crown of the head. Again, not a lot of force. Don't grit your teeth. Don't jam your abdominals. And release. One more. Maybe the breath is slowing down. Maybe you're moving into an observational mind as the diaphragm now works on its own. As if it has its own tidal rhythm. And you're experiencing your body being filled and empty. The mind is more of a passenger for the process. But let it be pleasant. So the mind likes to focus on it. It's a pleasing activity. The mind is like a pet dog. And to train the dog, you need to have some treats and make it a welcoming environment. And feel the body move. And the ribs, shoulders, maybe even the bones in the skull, the neck, the hips. Everything is moving as the breath moves more deeply into the nooks and crannies of the body, feeding them. Five more breaths. One more. Release the breath. Release your Tension in your body, floating in the body, observing the stillness. And the wonderful quality of ceasing for a second, all notions of further movement. You can stay longer if it feels comfortable. Otherwise, inhaling. And then just hold that buoyancy in the heart. Focus on a light energy, a lightness spreading out to the shoulders. More of an internal expansion. Gentle lift from the pelvic floor to the top of the skull without overdoing it. And release. 
Then we fold forward. You can take a chair, you can take your hands. Take five breaths to feel the undulation of the back ribs, mid ribs, shoulder blade, ribs. Spreading and releasing. Coming up, switch the cross of your legs if you're in Sukhasa. Inhale, then exhale, drop in. Again, you can have hands on a chair. And then let the lungs, let the diaphragm do its work. You should be able to feel as you take this pose. You could also be doing a child's pose if your cross legs aren't compliant. Feel the Double action of the diaphragm and forward fold. The spreading of the intercostals between each set of ribs like an accordion and the descending attachment of the diaphragm down to the pelvic floor. And then coming back, inhale, and then we're gonna briefly lie down. You can take a, you can take a, your towel roll now and turn it vertically to sister your spine, be right under your spine. This would be one way to go. And create a T with the other towel for your head. And then we lie down on our little towel roll, double towel roll T, uh, as if we're on a boat. And we can feel the spine on the towel roll, the arms outstretched, making any adjustments in the Second towel roll onto your occiput, on the top of the curve of the neck, so that it's comfortable for you. And just breathe here in the same manner. So inhale, feel the back ribs and the lower spine. Contact the towel roll, sliding upward, spreading the shoulders, exhale. Release, just a couple. Now we're gonna go from side to side as we exhale. So inhale, feel the movement of the breath up the back ribs all the way to the shoulder blades. Exhale, just spill the knees and the body gently over to the left. Inhale, the wave of breath comes in, glides up the back ribs with the sensation, the towel roll, exhale, we just spill over to the right. So just start moving, doesn't have to be much. And the neck and the shoulders in the same direction as the knees. See if you can feel the gentle massage of the rib cage away from the spine as you roll to the side. Don't overdo it, don't try to push. All we're doing is doing a little back rib, back of neck massage. Two more at your own pace. If it feels really good to hang out, you've got some injury or some stickiness in the ribs for a couple of breaths. You can do that. And then bring the knees back to center, bring the arms closer to the hips and shavasana, stretch the legs long, and breathe. Again, can you feel the texture of the towel roll? If it's not a pleasing experience to have a towel roll, you can omit it. And we're gonna bend the knees again and from here, roll over to the side and come up to seated. And we can just 
Go ahead and turn and face our towel rolls if you like in Virasan and take the knees as much to parallel as you can. Most people have to move them out a bit. And now we're going to dive into extended child's pose. So you can start with your elbows bent, drop into your forward fold, placing your head on the towel roll, and just breathe into the back ribs. And remember those wings of the scapula. So if you lift up halfway and inhale, start to bring the spread the fascia of the ribs up from the low back, mid back, shoulder blades. Maybe you can now get to extended child's pose. Keep the back of the neck long. And if you need more support under your forehead, take it. Five good breaths. And let's come up halfway on the inhale. We can walk our hands over to the right. We've done this in the past, not too much. We we'll take a diagonal. Child's pose. And here, as we move to the right, you can slide your right hand back, then your elbow, and try to breathe more exclusively into that left rib cage. Letting all the ribs open up with the breath flowing up the low, mid, and upper ribs. Stay with your breath. And then when you're ready, coming up halfway, moving your towel roll or block, yoga block, over to the left. Not too much. Slide your left hand back as a kickstand. Drop your hips and breathe the breath into the right side. Again. Keep the tongue relaxed, throat relaxed. And then coming back center and taking the towel with you, holding up your mat. And now let's just move a little bit as we used to do in the pattern that I call scrubbing the floor. So hopefully you have a surface that's smooth with your towel, or if you're on a carpeted surface, you probably don't need the towel. And so I'm gonna move Forward on inhale, and backward on exhale. Inhale, let the movement of the diaphragm. Two more, move slowly. You'll let the balloon-like expansion of the ribs with the hands wider than the shoulder. Whip. Can you feel on the exhale the slight retraction or pulling up through the pelvic floor, which helps pull you back? Let's move to the diagonal now. Left inhale, let the ribs fill. Don't let the arms, the strength of the arms, overrule the breath. So it's not doing a bench press. The arms are only extensions of the ribs and the heart. Keep the throat relaxed. Open the mouth when you breathe out, if that helps. And then we go over to the other side. And if you find it's pinchy or tight in the fascia or the muscles, back off. Let the breath work with the restriction. You can even stay in the restriction, take a few breaths, 
I've got a little restriction in my left rib cage. I could then say, well, I know let the end continue to teach class, but I'm going to sit here and just breathe my, take my mind and my breath right to where it's sticky. And then you take the practice into your own hands. And then we'll go ahead and unfurl our mats. And we'll come into downward dog using our wave technique, our breath technique, hands and knees. We're going to tuck the toes under, spread the fingers. And as you inhale, begin to drop back and spread those back ribs. Let them open. And, and then come forward up to hands and knees. Feel the mid ribs, the upper scapula, and then exhale. Look forward and draw back. And just start to create a wave. So we've already opened some of these little connecting points, sticky points from the spine out to the rib cage. Can you feel them now in motion? Can you feel the muscles starting to come online without getting bossy, keeping the arms full, extended? And then on the next draw back, can you lift the hips up and let the legs come up? And exhale to plank position, drop your knee. So stay with the first one. If this is too hard, up fills the sails of the legs and the arms and down dog. Exhale, keep the buoyancy. The rectal abdominal muscles have been grasped. And then we just flow up and exhale down and move your own pace. If you're staying just with hands and knees and puppy dog pose, that's fine. One more, and then we try to float on up using that diaphragmatic dual action. Ribs full up to the palms, shoulder blades full, pelvic floor, and then breathe the down dog. Bend your knees if you need to. And then let's walk the hands back to the feet and forward fold, holding opposite elbows, bending knees, and let gravity assist the opening of the ribs a little further. Feel the outer arms, the lats, which anchor in the low back, giving a little spinal length via gravity. And then slowly we bend the knees, we come up with a rounded spine, again feeling the diaphragm help lift us up. So if you're using your diaphragm in coordination with your bandhas, even something simple as coming up out of poses is safer. If I just yank the frame of the body up without any sort of breath, use of breath, very dangerous. So let's go ahead and step forward and do our Utkatasana series that I've been doing with you, where you bend your knees, bring your hands to your belly like you're scooping out, tracing out the line of the Uddiyana Bandha, and feel the arms load up. Exhale, standing, palms to heart. You can have the feet hip width or wider, or the feet together if you're a purist. We feel the sails of the lungs, they're floating, the arms are floating off of the filling of the back ribs. Exhale, we straighten up by just engaging that pelvic floor. It just start to flow. The wave comes in. Simple, simple. If I've got the diaphragm on board with the bandhas, I can go deeper and deeper without stressing, straining the knees. But obviously, everyone's working at different levels and it's not about the depth of the pose, but rather the depth 
of the breath. Don't force the breath, just invite it into the yoga pose. Okay, this could be fun. And when the palms come to the heart, you relax the throat, the tongue, the brain. Perfectly designed this breathing process to help you investigate and enliven the inside and the outside. And if you want to stay in a static pose, it's like a meditation. Your mind may wander to pains in the body or strains. Try, try to make slight adjustments, keeping the focus on the diaphragm to let it be light. Let it be light. The heart is light. And then the palms come to the heart. You strengthen your legs in a non-violent way to your body. What a concept. Let's go ahead and step our left foot back, warrior one. Bring our hands to our belly like the wave. We're bringing a wave into our body. It's the, the wave of the breath. Air becomes like fluid in the body. Air comes into down through the nose into the diaphragm, up through the back ribs and down to the pelvic floor, and flow. Straighten the front leg, inhale. Feel the back ribs lift the arms, the descending diaphragm plug into the pelvic floor, and then on the exhale, everything is integrated. In the same way, when we sat at the beginning of practice, the advice in the old manual I read, how can the spine be lengthened in a comfortable way? If you're a flower, a vinyasa person, you keep flowing and you get nice lubrication in the joints, the way the arms are circling, like wings, or you stay. You sit in the exhale, you soak in it. And maybe it pauses if you're working pranayama. On the next one, we can move the feet together, or if you want a little extra, let the arms go back like swan wings, lift the back heel, and float into the kasana. With the back ribs fully expanded, pelvic floor fully on board, the back of the neck fully long, and then the feet come together, the knees bend, the arms come up, and exhale. Full cycle. Right foot back, and let the wave breath continue. So if you're doing this practice on your own, the deep movement of breath into all the pieces of the body, particularly the ones that are injured, weak. Closing the eyes for a few breaths, once you find a motion or a pose, is good. But of course, the ultimate challenge that you have in Zoom and in life is that the eyes are looking out and in at the same time. Flow with your own tidal rhythm of your breath. Open the whole cake, the back ribs. Arms floating, joints moving in the arms, joints moving in the legs and the hips. And then exhale, sink and sit. Only to degree that the integrity of the whole body feels like a integrated balloon. I'm not trying to strain and want any one piece but that diaphragm is expanding the shape. You're welcome to stay, or we come back, inhale. You could just bring the feet together, or let your swan wings go back, and then lift the back leg, fill with the diaphragm. Yes, there are actions in the legs, but let the actions of the legs be tied into this diaphragmatic movement. Expansiveness. Feet together, chair pose, inhale and exhale. Clear your palate. 
Ah, if you're a tense person in your throat, you see people at the gym going and people rowing right here in the throat gets nailed. All that tension just sends messages to your brain that it's not a happy time. <laughs> and let's go ahead and go for a walk as we move to our warrior two sequence. This walking motion that I've introduced through the classes, sliding right foot back, and the dual action of descending and lifting in the planted foot allows you to start to play just as we did in our diagonal child's pose on one side. You might even feel it in one nostril. If I'm on my right foot, my right arm's up, my right rib cage is lifting, my right pelvic floor area is engaged. I feel it through my right nostril. Left. And all I'm doing is putting an air hose in that side of the body and it just fills it up. I don't have strain in my upper neck, my trapezius, or anything like that. Now we're going to step back. Once you go to your right foot, if you want a little extra challenge, you float forward like you're doing a bow, bend your front knee and step back to warrior two. Now we start to just move the front arm with the wave action. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, straighten the right leg, exhale. And we bring both arms into it. Opening our wings. Again, if you weren't here earlier in class, been reading this old Mahamudra Tibetan yoga meditation text. You know, like open your vulture wings. <laughs> Hands a little higher than shoulders, but feel the breath come into the low ribs, the mid ribs, the upper ribs, the shoulder blades out. And then let's stay. Stay here, wherever you want to go is fine. You want to take a triangle pose, straighten, keep the buoyancy in the rib cage, and exhale, tone the pelvic floor. You're still flowing in your breath. You're still drawing breath in and expanding. When I want to come up, I use the buoyancy in the rib cage, particularly the upper rib cage or the left rib. Brings me right up and back to warrior two. Drop your left arm. Let's reverse warrior now. The right arm is floating up through the extension of the right rib cage. The right sit bone is being attenuated through the downward action of the diaphragm. Feels nice. And then we can take side angle without losing that attenuation. Of the right rib cage. Now we're going to go for a little swim with the left arm. Crawl stroke. Inhale, the wave comes in. And exhale. The whole left rib cage is being filled, the whole left lung. The throat is soft. The head is in a comfortable position. You can stay here. If you're rotating the head up to the arm, I suggest taking the left hand to the back of the skull and gently, like a mother cat, let the back of the skull be drawn long as part of the inhale. Let the whole piece of the head be part of the prana. Don't pull. This expand. Ah. Come up. Let's go ahead and turn the feet to parallel and come into our horse or goddess pose. Hands to belly, inhale, and exhale, just circle and hold the globe. Inhale, 
back ribs, mid ribs, like a butterfly stroke. Exhale, pelvic floor is integrated with the tall spine of the meditation. Too hard for you to be in a horse stance? Get tighter between the legs. But bring the breath into this now. Flow, breathe up the back ribs, down to the pelvic floor. And I'm integrated. You want to build your energy? You stay and breathe here. Otherwise, let's go ahead and descend to the floor. Fingertips or hands on chair. Bend the knees. Drop the head and exhale. Start to extend your arms like we did an extended child's pose. So we've extended wide-legged down dog. Knees soft. Undulate the ribs forward through the arms and breathe. Bend the knees. On inhale, straighten on exhale. And then walk the hands back between the feet, drop the head, and take the static pose where you can hold your opposite arms as we did, or elbows as we did in forward fold. Don't lock the knees. Arms can move further back, head sends. Don't force the pose, bring it into it. Work with gravity. You can stay as long as you like, if that's useful. Flat back, and let's go ahead and bend the knees again. And inhale, up you come using your diaphragm. Brings you up. Let's turn the feet to the front of the room, step the feet together, and go for another walk. I'm gonna just turn my direction so I'm not being rude. And Breathe again. Once you come out of a static pose, breathe again, refill if you've lost the breath. We go to the left foot, left arm. We have that buoyancy. Again, if you want to bow forward, you can. And we come into warrior two on the left side. First, you take the left arm, straighten the front leg, inhale and exhale. Just start to move in that left side. Can you feel the ribs, the back ribs filling? Or we work to the towel roll against the spine. Imagine it's still there. Rolling the towel roll, spine and ribs. And both arms. Start to flap your wings. Open the wings of prana. Relax your tongue, relax your throat. You want to do a triangle pose from here. Inflate, front leg, exhale, keep the inflation. Find the connection through the pelvic floor that the diaphragm provides and breathe there. You're ready to come up, the diaphragm and the breath lifts you up. Warrior two and reverse warrior with the breath. Opening down and above the left side and then side angle. Inflate. And now let's start to swim with the right arm. Move slowly at your own pace. And then the static pose, but the breath still moves. If you're moving the head, take the hand to the back, the right hand to the back of the skull and let it be a lengthening through the ribs, all the way to the skull. And then inhale, come up. And take your horse riding stance, your goddess pose again. Take five or six of these. And then you're gonna forward fold and go into the same 
downward dog sequence while I grab my water. Extended down dog in prasarita. Now this time in our extended downward dog, we're going to start to bend one knee on inhale and then exhale, come back to center. Bend the other knee and come back. As you bend your left knee, see if you can feel the ribs still expanding. And try the other side. Hands walk back near the feet, forward fold, don't push. Keep the knees soft, feel the diaphragm and the torso. Even if you're to hold your ankles, as you've done in the past, keep the arms soft. Don't get muscular with the arms. With gravity in the breath, spread open the scapula and lengthen the back of the head. How's your breath? Are you still fully breathing? And then to come up, we take a flat back, we bend our knees, and remember, the diaphragm spreading the back ribs, coming up the back ribs, and sitting us down, and it pulls you right up. And back to the front of the room. So I'm just flowing a little bit more today after going through the preliminaries earlier in the week. If you're just coming on board, just take it at your leisure. Now we're going to do some standing poses using our technology. And we're going to go ahead and see if we can step back with the left foot again to warrior one. And move with the wave pattern. If you've got a shoulder injury, you don't even have to bring the arms up high. You can just create a hoop in the heart center. More like a Tai Chi person. This notion that you've got to take your arms up near your ears is terrible for the, <laughs> for the shoulder girdle in most cases. Some who have brought the breath way up into those Spreading back ribs can really feel that that might work, but always keep the hands, in my opinion, in visual view. And don't overwork the muscles at the sake of disintegrating the expansive quality of breath. Now from here, we're gonna step your, our left foot to join our right and see if we can take our hands to the left knee and place the left foot on top of the right knee. Can you do that? If you can't, you can take a chair and place your left foot on the chair and hold like this. Okay, so that's your modification. Otherwise, now we're bending the right knee, putting the left foot on top of it and finding a straight spine with our breath. Normally, we might do this eagle wrap by wrapping the knees together and squeezing the heck out of the legs. And then we lose the hoop of the diaphragm, potentially. Okay, and then release that. Let's try the other side. The right foot goes back, warrior one. We start to flow. It's like you've got a, an ocean in your pocket. It's always there and you can bring it out and play with it. You don't have to be near the sea and let it flow through the body. And then you step your right foot forward and maybe you can put the right foot on top of the left knee, just slightly bent and lightly create a hoop in the arms holding the front knee. You use a chair if you can. But now can you feel the diaphragm integrating up and down up and down. So we don't have to be dissective 
or anatomical once we have the integrating power of the diaphragm. Okay, and then release. Now, free play. <laughs> so you could step back with the left foot, inhale, and exhale. Capture the leg and move back and forth. Inhale, I'm inflated, everything's integrated, consolidated. So this is a little challenge for the advanced students or using your chair. We do the other side. Not a big stance, inhale, back ribs, diaphragm picked up, pulls the back leg from the pelvic floor. And I'm just flowing now, and the exhale seals the deal, but I don't lose the buoyancy and I'm not gritting my teeth, I'm not jamming my throat chakra, I'm not jamming my lower abdominals. It's very subtle. So I can exist in this pose in a, a nice open way. Okay? So now the beginners, you're gonna use your chair for extended leg. And you had your one of your feet up like that and you can take your foot and work here. And bend your knee and then create a wave like that. And maybe you're just gonna then hold on the bottom of the knee. Others might be able to go further forward to the leg. Still others I'll show are able to float into full extended leg. Okay, so that's the modification, but here's the Here's the fun part. If you're able to do it, we step our left foot back. Warrior one, we're just doing a little flow of the ocean. Comes into our bodies. Wave. Oh. Exhale, we pick up that pose that we just did with the foot on the knee. And then maybe we extend the leg out. And exhale in. And then what, what about no hands? Ah, inhale, exhale. So that's the super advanced. <laughs> but for those that need a strap, the inhale would be the inflating mechanism. Up, and the exhale, bring it back. Inhale, and exhale. Okay, and you're working with a chair if you need to, putting the foot on the chair. But let's do the other side, right foot back, and then we'll grow this once you have the concept. And on the next exhale, you either step up onto your chair, holding the bottom of your knee, extending, or you try the wave, inhale, extend, and exhale. Maybe no hands. Maybe a strap. But unlike in the past where the yoga teacher says, now straighten your front leg, now fall forward. <laughs> and then your face is all contorted. We want to do these things by, in whatever means, inhale, there goes the diaphragm. Whoa, there goes the leg, maybe it doesn't straighten and I'm completely inflated. Just like we did going for our walk. This is the same left side inflation. Hopefully that's making sense as we get a little further along. <laughs> so let's go back to side one. We have room for a little more play time. And this can now play out for your weekend practice, your flowing, and your warrior, you need to have a chair ready and exhale you come up maybe you take the knee with both hands maybe you can take your right hand your hip and as you inhale you're going to open as you exhale close inhale if the hips feeling good maybe you can Bring that arm, right arm out, 
and circle with that. I've had you do this in the past, but not with the movement of the diaphragm. This can lead to all sorts of fun things. Of course, if you're super advanced, you have full expansion. It's endless. Good. Can we try the other side? We step back, right foot. Inhale the wave, exhale. You're working on a chair if you need to. Hold the knee with your right hand, right knee. Establish the left hip, yes. But how are you establishing the hip? Through the descension of the diaphragm to the psoas, the inner leg. Where do you go from here? Can you play with the breath on that left side? Can you open the knee and close? Can you feel the back ribs circling as you do the circling of the hip and the shoulder joints on the opposite sides? If you were a beginner and you're like, what the heck is going on here? You could be doing this on your back. You're super advanced and you're like, wow. I can be in the Bolshoi. The diaphragm is moving. And then you release. Take a forward fold, then a balasan. Shake your head a little, and your spine. Release, bend your knees. And then take your feet out like a duck and sit down to malasan. Perfect pose for back rib breathing. You can just drape your arms or your armpits on your knees and you get a nice back rib drop. So you begin to notice how classical yoga poses are really, in my opinion, designed to work but seldom do because we get caught up in the externals and we lose the internal feeding tube of the pose. Let's have a seat and then we're gonna take a forward fold, a backward roll, and then we're done. So Paschimottanasana, you're creating the wave action, you can have bent knees. Here comes the wave. Uh, you can just be working here. You could have your hands on a chair. Like this. If you're more of a beginner and you're just, well, this is good. But when I forward fold, I have my knees bent, I have my forearms down, and I'm in full integration with the breath. What I mean about not forcing this, okay, I gotta get my head down and I yank my fascia, and it creates a reaction in the body. Like, uh uh, nope. And so you're at odds. So you slowly, fluidly with your breath, with your nervous system, ah, then you get what you can, and then you breathe into it. Blow up the back ribs. Release the tongue. And caterpillar like, come into a deeper pose. The same broad shoulder blades of Paschimottanasana will take some of you back to our final pose, plow. Again, the action of the diaphragm and the deep abdominals. So, Beginners, what you can do is just do some rolls back and forth on your back, holding your knees. But just to show the advanced folks, we've done it before, watch your wall. The action of the diaphragm is gonna spread open my arms as I go back and my shoulder blades. They're not pinching together. And please don't look from side to side, but I orangutan my arms. At the same time, the diaphragm is going down on the exhale, it's gonna pull my 
legs back behind me. I don't know if it'll work, but that's the theory. Here we go. Inhale. Exhale. And you can go back and forth and do it a few times. Again, if you're a beginner and you don't have the flexibility in the, say, the legs, you go back and you work just with bent knees on your back. You can even work in the happy baby pose. And here you can hold your toes, outer feet, knees bent. And now you can feel the back ribs, the shoulder blades. It's pretty safe. It's pretty nice. You can relax your throat and let the back of the neck be long. And you release, you come out of plow if you're there and stretch your legs long in Shavasana. The counter pose for plow is generally fesh pose. We haven't done any back bends in a while, but you're welcome to go a little left before you settle down into your Shavasana. Give your legs and arms a shake, give your tongue. A little ah, uh, little ah, uh, back of the throat. Always a catch point. You're welcome to stay in Shavasana for several minutes of wonderful pause and work the breath awareness again in its exit strategy for movement, focusing more on the exhalation and the pause at the end of it to calm the nervous system. Maybe placing your hand on the belly, hand on the heart, softening those areas. Otherwise, bend your knees, rolling to the side, coming up to seated as we close off and Sukhasan, making those little adjustments. We all know certain things that work for our body, but then what integrates the body? It's always, it's always the breath. And maybe you've spent a lifetime breathing unevenly in one side or the other. Typically the left side is deficient. So now can you feel the the movement of the diaphragm. So that the spine is lengthened through the buoyancy of the breath. Let's take a final ohm to close it off. Let the inhale flood into the body. 